Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, welcome, 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 welcome. What a delight and a praise unto our God as we come to episode 78 by the grace of God, spiritual engineering. And we want to go uh, in depth because this is one of the amazing Psalms of Asaph that are actually um, Psalm 78 is a teaching, a musical song, is a teaching song. It's a musical in depth. A muscle means more like uh, something to do with teaching. So we want to uh, draw from the well of salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. We commence with the prayer. Father, in the most excellent way, we pray, help us to see and open our eyes to see wonderful things out of your law. We pray that as we read the scripture, that Lord, it will become life, it will become flesh, it will become solution, it will become living, active, sharper than a two-edged sword. The Father God, you will help us to improve our systems, you will help us to improve our productivity, our effectiveness, Lord as we understand through the reading of the word in this wonderful session. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 78, if you have your Bible, you can be able to pick it, and together we can be able to look through it as we continue in this wonderful, wonderful time. Psalm 78, I am your host, Malcolm David. It's a joy to be on the 78th uh, episode of 150 Days of Psalms, Season 8. And truly, over the seasons, God has been gracious to us. He has taught us. He has continued to lead us. And particularly in this wonderful moment, to be able to proclaim his word and to receive answers to prayer as we go along. So here we go. Psalm 78. A muscle of Asaph. O oh, my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things, things from of old. What we have heard and known, what our fathers have taught us, we will not hide them from our children. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power, and the wonders he has done. He decreed statuses for Jacob and established the law in Israel. Hallelujah. Which he commanded our fathers to teach their children so the next generation would know them. Even the children yet to be born, and they in turn would tell their children then they would put their trust in god and would not forget their his deeds and would keep his commands verse number eight psalm 78 78 they would not be like their forefathers a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to god whose spirits were not faithful to him Verse 9. The men of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by his law. They forgot what he had done, the wonders he had shown them. He did miracles in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt, in the region of Zoan. He divided the sea and led them through. He made the water stand firm like a wall. He guided them by the cloud. He guided them with the cloud by day and with the light from the fire all night. He split the rocks in the desert and gave them water as abundant as the seas. He brought streams out of a rocky crag and made water flow down like rivers. But they continued against, they continued to sin against him. Psalm 78 verse 17. They continued to sin against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They willfully put God to the test by demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God saying, 
Can God spread a table in the desert when he struck the water? When he struck the water, when he struck the rock, water gushed out, verse 20, and streams flowed abundantly. But can he also give us food? Can he also supply meat for his people? When the Lord had them, he was very hungry. His fire broke out against Jacob, and his wrath rose against Israel, for they did not believe in God or trust in his deliverance. Yet he gave a command to the skies above and opened the doors of the heavens. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them grain from heaven. Men ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. He let loose the east wind from the heavens and led forth the south wind by his power. He rained meat down on them like dust, flying birds like sand on the seashore. He made them come down inside their camp and all around their tents. They ate until they had more than enough, for he had given them what they had craved. But before they turned from the food they craved, even while it was still in their mouths, God's anger rose against them. He put to death the sturdiest among them, cutting down the young men of Israel. In spite of all this, they kept on sinning. In spite of all his wonders, they did not believe. So he ended their days in futility and their years in terror. Whenever God slew them, they would seek him. They eagerly turned to him again. They remembered that God was their rock. That God most high was their redeemer. But when, but then they would flatter him with his mouth, lying to him with their tongues. Their hearts were not loyal to him. They were not faithful to his covenant. Yet he was merciful and forgave their iniquities and did not destroy them. Time after time he restrained his anger and did not stir up his, wrath, his full wrath. He remembered that they were but flesh, a passing breeze that does not return. Now, wonderful people, as we continue, we see a lot of, you know, um, prayer points in this particular psalm 78 and we'll be coming down into them as we pray and also we'll be able to get into what i call the spiritual engineering be able to become more effective in your christian work be able to um be able to be more productive be more fruitful be able to trust god and be able to know more of him hallelujah and tell it to the next generation. Psalm 78, one of the things that we need to take with us is that this is not just an ordinary psalm. It is also something that we want to tell to the next generation, to tell the next generation and tell the next generation. Just the same way when a road is engineered, a civil engineer will come and be able to look at it and be able to know this road can be able to carry this kind of, of weight. This road or this bridge can be able to hold even uh, five vehicles at the same time. The engineering is something that God has given man to be able to do physical things. There are all types of engineering. But now the spiritual engineering is beyond the engineering of man that makes aircraft fly, that makes buildings be made of steel and they do not fall away, that makes huge water tanks be placed on top of heights and they don't fall, even when they are empty. This is what the term engineering means. But as we read on from verse 40 downwards, we now begin to uh, pick out prayer points. Hallelujah. What a joy. That episode 78, we are adding out not just only in the teaching aspect, but also we want to pray that the Lord will help us to stay in His faithfulness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalm 78, verse 40. It says, 
how often they rebelled against him in the desert and grieved him in the wasteland. Again and again they put God to test. They vexed the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power the day he redeemed them from the oppressor, the day he displayed his miraculous signs in Egypt, his wonders in the region of Zoan, he turned their rivers into blood. They could not drink from their streams. He sent swarms of flies that devoured them and frogs that devastated them. He gave their crops to the grasshopper. They produce the, their produce to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore figs with sleet. He gave over their cattle to the hail, like their livestock to bolts of lightning. He unleashed against them. Whoo, glory! His hot anger, his wrath, indignation, and hostility, a band of destroying angels. Beloved, this part of Psalm 78, 49, is very very key for the intercessor to understand the dynamics of spiritual warfare that it is not us as men who release these weapons but when we align ourselves to the purposes of god in obedience to his word in prayer in faithfulness in goodness in um, self-control all these things then when you begin to pray god in his arsenal of weapons and things you have done of old is able to release from his storehouse answers to prayer answers to prayer we see like verse 49 he's unleashed against them his hot anger if god release hot anger you can see what happened in egypt that is exactly the picture that this masculine is giving us of the the things that god did so Psalm 78, 49, I want you to underline it if you don't have it underlined in your Bible. Because this is a very key aspect when we pray. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how we're going to pray. So he unleashed his hot anger, his wrath, indignation, and hostility, a band of destroying angels. He, prayed a, he prepared a path for his anger. He did not spare them from death. But he gave them over to the plague. He struck down all the firstborn of Egypt, the first fruits of manhood in the tents of Ham. But he brought his people out like a flock. Mm, thank you, Holy Spirit. He brought his people out like a flock. He led them like sheep through the desert. He guided them. He guided them safely. So that they were unafraid by the sea and gulfed their enemies. But the sea and gulfed their enemies. But the sea and gulfed their enemies. Hallelujah. May the Lord guide you safely. May you be unafraid. As the sea and gulfs your enemies. In the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord bring you out like a flock. May he lead you like sheep through a desert. In the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to walk in that counsel of God. Begin to walk in the wisdom begin to walk in the power the anointing the grace hallelujah that is available as we walk in the precepts of the lord and the concepts and the word hallelujah as you begin to see that indeed there is a type of engineering that is there for the believer that when he walk in this kind of engineering the lord causes everything to fall into place bringing productivity and bringing effectiveness verse 53 he guided them safely so they were unafraid but the sea engulfed their enemies thus he brought them to the border of his holy land to the hill country his right hand had taken he drove out nations before them and allotted their lands to them as an inheritance he settled the tribes of israel in their homes but they put God to the test and rebelled against the Most High. They did not keep his statutes like their fathers. They were disloyal and faithless, as unreliable as a faulty bow. They angered him with their high places. 
they arouse this jealousy with their idols. Hmm. When God heard them, he was very angry. He rejected Israel completely. He abandoned the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent he had set up among men. He sent the ark of his might into captivity, his splendor into the hands of the enemy. He gave his people over to the sword. He was very angry with his inheritance. Fire consumed their young men, and their maidens had no wedding songs. Their priests were put to the sword, and the widows could not weep. Then the Lord awoke from sleep, as a man wakes from the stupor of wine. He brought back his enemies. He put them to everlasting shame. Then he rejected the tents of Joseph. He did not choose the tribe of Ephraim, but he chose the tribe of Judah. Mount Zion, which he loved, he built his sanctuary like the heights, like the earth that he established forever. He chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheep pens. From tending the sheep, he brought him to be shepherd of his people, Jacob, of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with the integrity of heart, with integrity of heart, with skillful hands, he led them. Beloved of God, as we align ourselves to see the agenda and the purposes of God manifest in our lives, the spiritual engineering of the Lord, number one, is based on humility. He chooses that we walk in a prideless life, a life that is humble, a life full of loyalty, a life full of obedience. As surely as obedience opens the blessings, then disobedience is going to open the curses. So the engineering upon which you are in, know that when you see any form of activities that is not of God, you understand that there is some engineering happening. Engineering is not something you can see with your eyes. But an engineer will look at a metal uh, substance, a metal uh, something like a plate, and he'll say, this one, this roof, even if all the roof is made of metal, it can never be blown away. The way they have designed it, using natural science, using mathematics, they can be able to use the mathematics and the natural science and say, this roof will not be blown away. In the spiritual realm, there is a form of engineering as well. I may not go on into teaching natural engineering, but I know about spiritual engineering. And this is what this muscle is all about. An entire, actually this is almost the second largest uh, chapter of the Psalms. We have also Psalm 119 coming up very shortly when we get to episode 119. Uh, actually it's the, the joy of scripture is is in psalm 119 just being able to to love psalm 119 it's oh my god psalm 119 please do have a look at psalm 119 ahead of even us getting to episode 119 episode 119 is going to be monumental it's going to be huge because as we continue on we love the scripture we love the lord they say oh i will love your lord like david would say the one who speaks from the sheep pen David was picked from the sheep pen. That's why when he raised, when he writes down Psalm 75, uh, no, Psalm 7, uh, Psalm 113. Is it Psalm 113? Is it from the, from David or let me just see it. Hallelujah. Let me just read for you Psalm 113 ahead and then we can pray. Psalm 113. Hallelujah. It is not titled, but Psalm 113 says it's from verse 7 to verse 9. It says he raises the poor from the dust and and lifts the needy from the ash heap he sets them with princes the princes of their people he settles the barren woman in her home as a happy mother of children one of the things that the enemy is using in our time is deception deception bringing deception into the church and causing the church to feel like you know, uh, 
This is it. This is what we are looking for. With all the many, many activities and all the resources we have in learning, rarely do you see people who want to read the Word of God for themselves. Just the same way when we are using a road, majority of the people don't want to know what is civil engineering. They don't want to know that. They just want to use a road. When people see a building, a tall building, they don't think about the architects. They don't think about the engineers. They don't think about the science behind that building or an aircraft when it is aeronautical engineering, when aircraft are being engineered. Then nobody thinks about that. But for you, dear beloved, to your faith, you need to add knowledge. Let me just adjust my seat because it's important I tell you this like we're sitting on the table. I need to mention this to you that you need to add to your faith knowledge and not the knowledge of the enemy. Don't fill your heart with what he is doing. Don't fill your heart with what he did, with the rituals he does and the things and many, many stories about his darkness. Be filled with the word of God. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with, with, with his love. Be filled with his knowledge. Be filled with his goodness, with his kindness. Be filled. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Dear intercessor, knowledge is good. But there are times that people will love knowledge more than godliness. That people will know many things. Like in the times you are living, there's so much knowledge. Someone can be able to, using knowledge and artificial intelligence, create moments, even create for you as if you are inside a church or inside a place. We don't need to go to Israel now. We just go for a virtual tour. There are so many people offering it online. You just go and type in, you can go on Google Earth, and also see how Israel looks like. It's not like before where we didn't know exactly how Israel looks like. But remember, David uh, Asaph teaches in this very long teaching song. Psalm 78 is a masculine of Asaph. Asaph was a, a, a masculine is a teaching, is a teaching song. So why don't you hear a masculine of Asaph? Is a teaching song. So when they are singing, they are, it's like singing A, B, C, D. Now they are singing the scripture. Hallelujah. Psalm 78. Wonderful people of God. Hallelujah. I want us to pick some few prayer points from this and then we shall get on to uh, Proverbs Proverbs 4. Wow, wow, wow. Proverbs 4. My God. I just love the book of Proverbs because the book of Proverbs gives us wisdom. We are able to get raw material for wisdom. We are able to get what, um, what, what um, the wisdom, you know, like it's rich, it is honey. It is being poured out. It's honey. It's not in the hive. It's not in the hive. So there are no bees. It's just pure honey. That is what the word of the Lord is. When you hear the word, the land of flowing with milk and honey, it does not only uh, mean the physical milk. Hallelujah. It also means the spiritual milk. So in a moment, I just want us to go before the Lord and just prepare our hearts in this prayer of Psalm 78. We say, Lord, I long for your counsel. Lord, I long for your ways. I long for your ways, O oh Lord. I trust you. I put my confidence in you. I put my trust in you. You are the living God. You always hear, you always answer prayer, my Lord. I thank you for this opportunity for me to pray from Scripture. I take this opportunity to pray according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So we pray the Scripture of Psalm 78. Let's pick it. Psalm 78, verse 1, on to verse um eight all those as prayer points hallelujah so i want to just um bring teaching to you how to turn this into prayer points in the new testament in our time and be able to apply to our circumstances situations conditions 
things that God has allowed us. Whew, glory. I bless the Lord for enabling me to this. Hallelujah. All my people hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things from old. What we have heard and known, what our fathers have told us, we will not hide them from our children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy of the Lord, the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. So I want us to take this moment and pray for our children. Even if they are old and they are already, you are already a grandmother, you are already a grandfather, this is still prayer that you, is valid for your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Whether they are saved or not saved, tell it to the next generation, the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we pray for our children right now. We pray for our children, Lord God, all across the nations. That, Father God, we will tell them of your wonders. We'll tell them of your praiseworthy deeds, O oh Father. We thank you, O oh Lord, even as you decreed, decreed the statutes of Jacob, O oh Father, and established the law, Father God, as you commanded our forefathers to teach our children so that the next generation would know them. Father, we pray that we will be faithful in teaching our children. We will be faithful to engineer in their lives the word of God, that we will engineer it. We will write it. We will meditate on it. We will show it to them. They will read it for themselves. They will have personal testimonies in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Then they would put their trust in the Lord. They would not forget these deeds and would keep his commands. Those are threefold way as you pray, you begin to shift your focus from the problem that you are facing to the, to the focus of trusting in the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord. Do not forget his deeds. Hear about those slayer. Yes, let you keep his commands in the name of Jesus. Keep the commands of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I put my trust in you today. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that the nations of the earth, they will be able to hearken to your voice in this scripture and begin to engineer in their walk with you. Lord, the obedience and the trust in your word. We thank you, King of glory. We thank you, Abba Father, for these great moments that come from you. We thank you, King of glory, for the Holy Spirit that you have enabled us and filled us with your goodness and mercy. That we have seen your blessings even every day and we have experienced the supernatural as we continue in your ways. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, I want us to do a little bit of warfare and we're going to skip. Um, but before we go to the warfare part, we want also to get some nice things coming from the Lord. And one of the things that I would mention about reading scripture is that we must also apply scripture. We don't just read it. We apply scripture. The scripture must be applied. It must be applied. For you to see answers to prayer, you must act the scripture. You must be like a good actor in a script. Take the script of the word and then begin to act it out. Begin to act every, you know, every, every scene, every scenery of your life. Begin to be like you are a, a very good actor. Actor, what do I mean? Not just in the fake aspect, but you act the word of God. You see what I'm saying? Is that as God gives us this and say, put your trust in me, then you put it. Not you put your trust in God and then you're still wondering, what will we do? How is it going to be? You put your trust in the Lord. Do not continue to sin. I shared this with someone. I said, do you know that of all the hundreds and millions of people on earth, Satan does not sin. He causes them to sin. All the sin in the earth is done by men. Satan himself is sin. Himself is already condemned. Or himself is already defeated. Himself is already destined for destruction at the end of days. That one is not changing. He can't even repent. He doesn't have the chance. 
he cannot repent. You have a chance to repent. You have a chance to turn around. If you are walking in sin, do not continue in sin. Do not rebel against the Most High. I saw someone in one of the videos saying they don't believe in uh, Christianity. They say Christianity is this and that. And I looked at it and I said, you see, for me, I'm not called to argue. I'm called to preach the gospel. I don't argue at all. I meet anyone who wants me to argue. I will not argue because the servant of the Lord must not argue. That is the word of God. There are certain things that as you grow in faith, People who knew you 10 years ago, when they come meeting you now, <laughs> they will discover that so much has happened in your life. Because the things that used to drive you before are not the same things that are driving you now. When you have allowed the word of the Lord to come into your spirit, soul and body. That you need to understand that the servant of God must not argue. He must not argue. You must not be a person who argues. <laughs> Preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Preach it. Let the people hear the gospel. And anyone who wants to turn you into arguments, do not go into that direction. The only argument we can bring is the one in Isaiah 43 verse 26 that says, review the past for me. Let us argue the matter together. State the case for your innocence. Your first father sinned. Your spokesman, your spokesman rebelled against me. So I will disgrace the dignitaries of your temple. And I will consign Jacob to destruction, to destruction and Israel to scorn. You see these scriptures. They are living and active. Can he supply meat for his people? The people asked the question. When the Lord heard them, he was very angry. You know that there are some things that when you say without knowledge of him, your engineering gets gone, it becomes wrong. If at all you are doing something for airspace, something for flying, you cannot use the same engineering for flying for the things that are supposed to move on the earth. This is just basically for the scientists, they understand what I'm talking about. The engineers, they know. But for you, dear child of God, this is the moment that we will be careful with our words and the things we speak. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We need to align ourselves to the wonders of God. They, verse 24 says, He rained down manna, Psalm 78, 24. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. The word manna is also derived from the Hebrew word. What they asked is, what is this? Manna, what is this? They asked the question. They didn't know what it was. But the bread of heavens, the bread of the angels, does not last the next day. There is no fridge in heaven. There is no refrigerator. There is no, we keep enough for us for tomorrow. Manna was coming every day. Every single day it was coming. All the food they could eat was coming. And then he bring his weapon called the east wind. Hey, beloved, let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. We are going to go deeper and deeper, but please, let's seek clarity rather than just being deep. deep. Let's move on to Proverbs. We thank you, Jesus. This Psalm 78 can be a whole workshop. It can be a whole three-day teaching. <laughs> so please, I urge you to go on into it and prayerfully learn more as the Lord is enabling you in Jesus' name. We go to Proverbs chapter 4 as we proclaim the word of God. Proverbs chapter 4, it says, Wisdom is supreme. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. Before we even read verse 2, are you noting something there? Pay attention and gain understanding. So if you do not pay attention, you will not gain understanding. Attention brings understanding. When you, gain, you pay attention, you gain understanding. 
pay attention, gain understanding. I want you to pray. Say, Lord, my Father, help me to gain attention. Oh, God, help me to pay attention and to gain understanding. In the name of Jesus, help me, oh God, to pay attention. Help my focus. Help my focus. Help me to focus. Help me to remain focused. Help me to remain focused, to pay attention, to pay attention, to pay attention, and to gain understanding. In the name of Jesus, help me to be attentive to detail. Help me to see you. Help me to hearken your voice. Help me to see you and to hearken your voice. Oh God, my Father, I pay attention. In the name of Jesus, I gain understanding. I receive in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive in Jesus' name. Verse 2. I give you sound learning. So do not forsake my teaching. When I was a boy in my father's house, still tender and an only child of my mother, he taught me and said, Lay hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands and you will live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget my words or swerve from them. Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Esteem her and she will exalt you. Embrace her and she will honor you. She will set a garland of grace over your head and present you with a crown of splendor. Hallelujah. Before we go to verse 10, I want you to pray and say, Lord my Father, I pay attention. I gain understanding in the name of Jesus. I receive wisdom. I receive. I receive wisdom. I fear the Lord. I shun evil in the name of Jesus. I fear the Lord. I shun evil in the name of Jesus. Yes, my father, I bring repentance of anything that caused me not to fear God. I pray Jehovah today in Jesus name. That I will shun evil. In the name of Jesus Christ, I receive wisdom. I receive understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Job writes about it in Job 28, 28. It says, to fear the Lord is understanding. And to shun evil, uh, to fear the Lord is wisdom. And to shun evil is understanding. Now receive the garland of grace on your head. And the crown of splendor that operates in the realm of wisdom and understanding. Nothing else. If you esteem the fear of God, you will be honored. If you shun evil and don't celebrate the wicked, don't celebrate the, the naysayers and all those wicked people, then God, in his own wisdom, releases from the wisdom a garland of grace on your head and present you with a crown of splendor. Listen, my son, verse 10. Accept what I say and the years of your life will be many. I guide you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not set your foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way. For they cannot sleep till they do evil. They are robbed of sleep until they make somebody fall. They eat of the bread of wickedness and drink of the wine of violence. Beloved, these two components, bread of wickedness, wine of violence, these are spiritually engineered. They are not things you will see. You will not see a big loaf of bread and then it will be called bread of wickedness. 
you will not see a cup that is written wine of violence or a glass it is not there but in the spirit dimension the engineering that causes even fruitfulness that causes barrenness is an engineering is something that you cannot see but it is causing an effectiveness and a productivity of something you cannot be able to contain if you do not walk in the ways of righteousness if you walk in the ways of righteousness then your spiritual engineering is pleasing god and you will not eat the bread of wickedness or drink the bread of the wine of violence in the name of Jesus. I pray for the nation of Haiti, my Father, my God. I pray for the wisdom to enter in the brethren in Haiti, O oh God, that they will shun evil, that they will destroy those evil shrines and those wicked altars of idols, O oh Father, that you will turn their hearts. Father, we know that there are many generations that have practiced that evil 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 culture of voodoo and other witchcraft i pray that wisdom will enter the hearts of the brethren in haiti and congo father and israel father for we know that even even though israel is the nation you love we still have so many people there that don't know you so many people that are not born again in israel oh god so many the lord if you came today they would remain they would be left behind and yet you were the one who walked in this land so father we pray enable us to stay away from the bread of weak wickedness and the wine of violence and help us lord to walk in your counsel and your delightful ways O oh god enable us to be in your counsel and where you want us to be we shall be in jesus name amen hallelujah what a joy verse 18 he says the path of the righteous is like the first gleaming shining is the first like the first gleam of light shining brighter till the full light of day the path of the just is like the first gleam of dawn shining brighter and brighter until the full night fullness of day that the path of the righteous the path of the righteous is like the is like the fast gleam of dawn shining brighter and brighter until the full light of day but the way of the wicked is like a deep darkness for they do not know what makes them stumble hallelujah you see in the previous verse up there it says that when you walk your steps will not be hampered when you run you will not stumble and then here it says that the, the the way of the wicked is like deep darkness they don't know what makes them stumble my son pay attention to what i say listen closely to my words do not let them out of your sight keep them within your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body above all else guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Your feet well, look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly in front of you. It says, make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. Do not sway to the right or the left keep your foot from evil beloved pay attention pay attention gain understanding let's pray more father in jesus name we are grateful that you are helping us in our spiritual engineering to focus more on you to work in wisdom to work in understanding father to remember of your deeds to put our trust in you to put our confidence in you our father we glorify your name because we know you are just and you will help us adjust, oh God. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord, because of everything you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, because of your mercies towards us. Thank you, Lord, because of your favor. Thank you, Lord, because we love you and we thank you. Continue to open our eyes to see wonderful things in your law. Continue to show us wisdom, favor, goodness. Help us today, Father, that as we experience you, in every in every dimension we'll keep telling to the next generation 
of your wonders and that lord our spiritual engineering would be in line with higher productivity and higher effectiveness of what you call us to do hallelujah in jesus name amen thank you father hallelujah we go on to book of revelation now revelation 13 revelation 13 hallelujah one joyful thing about this um, uh, pattern of reading scripture is how the Lord by his grace has enabled us to read the book of Revelation constantly because we are living in these times. We are living in the times that Christ is coming. He is here already in our hearts as Emmanuel. But the manifest return of the king of kings is eminent i'm telling you beloved of god <laughs> the nations are raging there's turmoil there's all the things we see as signs and we have to trust god that he will fulfill we will see the answers to prayer manifesting in our lives and we'll experience the supernatural like never before so we continue on revelation 13. it says and the dragon stood out of the sea. It says, And the dragon stood on the shore, stood on the shore of the sea. And then it says, And I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns of his, on his head, on, with ten crowns on his horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard and had feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon gave the beast his power and his throne. And it great authority. Revelation 13.3 One of the heads of the beast seemed to have had a fatal wound to it but the fatal wound had been healed and the whole world was astonished and followed the beast men worshiped the beast men worshiped the dragon it says men worshiped the dragon this is verse uh, verse 4 of revelation 13 men worshiped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast and they worshiped the beast and asked who is like the beast who can make war against him? The beast was given a mouth to utter proud and blasphemous words and exercise his authority for 42 months. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in those who live in heaven. He was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. And he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast. All whose names have not been written in the book of life. Belonging to the lamb that was slain at the creation of the world. He who has an ear, let him hear. If anyone who goes into captivity, into captivity he will go. If anyone is to be killed... With a sword, you, he will be killed. This calls for patience and this calls for patient endurance and faithfulness on the side of the saints. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercised all authority of the first beast on his behalf. And he made the earth and all his inhabitants worship the first beast whose fatal wound had been healed. And he performed great and miraculous signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth in full view of men. Because of the signs he was given power to do on behalf of the first beast, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. He ordered them to set up an image in honor of the beast who was wounded but by the sword and yet lived. He was given power to give breath 
to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is, which is the name of the beast or the number of the name. This calls for wisdom. If anyone has insight, let him calculate the number of the beast, for it is man's number. His number is 666. Six, six. Beloved, as we coming to the close of this session, I want to mention that the spiritual engineering is that not to know so much of the enemy. I mentioned when somebody is an aeronautical engineer, he's not going to be concerned with civil engineering making of a road. He's not going to be involved. He's going to be totally engulfed in the engineering of that particular uh, trade that he's in. If he's working on the aeronautics, things to do with aircraft, he's going to think of the aeronautical engineering. In the spirit dimension, choose righteousness, choose wisdom, choose the favor of God, choose the ways of God, and you will walk in wisdom. Let's come to a close. You're there probably, you have watched this uh, time and... Um, you have not given your life to Jesus. This is your moment. This is your moment to give your life to Jesus. This is your moment to give your heart to Him. It says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. It is today. It is now. The time has come. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, it says, As God fellow workers... We urge you not to take God's grace in vain. But it says, in the day of my favor I had you. In the day of salvation I helped you. I said, now is the day of salvation. Today. Now is the time of my favor. Today is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. May your name be written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Say with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you, Jesus, from the dead. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again. The old is gone. The new has come. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and with your fire. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. If you pray that prayer, please do write me. On my WhatsApp, plus 254-7220-8787. You can write under the comments below. Drop me an inbox and the Lord will do great and marvelous things as we come to a close. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for all these ones that I've heard about you. Thank you, Lord, for enabling our spiritual engineering to be according to your purposes and your descriptions. Enable us to get a mind of wisdom by paying attention and gaining understanding. We thank you, Father God, for shunning evil and also for the fear of the Lord. Help us, our God, as we continue in this uh, um, journey of, of 150 days of Psalm Season 8. Thank you so much for what you've learned so much, as what you're doing in our hearts, O oh God, as we put our confidence in you, and as we put our trust in you. We thank you, Lord, that your name will be glorified and honored in every way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Shabbat shalom, and the blessings be upon you. Shalom.